from Delaware's most award-winning radio news team, this is WDEL Video News. Here's Chris Carl. Among Delaware's top stories for Thursday, May 31st, state lawmakers consider sports betting for Delaware. Valero wants to produce more at its Delaware City Refinery, honoring Delaware's fallen veterans. Here are the details. Is sports betting a good bet for the state of Delaware? WDEL's Curtis Gray reports. We then talk about the relationship of sports wagering and casino win. Um, while well, sports wagering is not the most important factor in determining casino win, or we prepared uh, some statistical model. Morrowis Gaming Advisors shared details of a study with Delaware lawmakers about the economic impact of sports betting. How would an additional 69 to 70 million dollars annually sound going into your state's general fund? That is what Gaming Advisors revealed from a study on Wednesday to the House Gaming and Paramutuals Committee. Committee Chair Bear Area Republican Vince Lofink believes the move would better protect the state's competitive edge. Protect our competitive uh, position vis-a-vis uh, -vis the uh, Atlantic City expansions and growth in Atlantic City and potential slots in Merlin and the slots in Pennsylvania. Another thing certainly that could do is could provide us with another revenue stream of potentially $70 million a year. Attorney Laird Stabler representing the NCAA, NFL and other groups says they will legally fight sports betting because it violates the state's constitution. I feel that a very strong case can be made that the implementation of sports betting would run afoul of the provisions of the Delaware Constitution. I'm Curtis Gray, 11.50 a.m. WDEL. Police are investigating reports of a man attempting to convince young children to get into his car. The man tried to pick up two girls ages 10 and 12 yesterday morning as they waited for their bus in Manor Park near Newcastle. Police say the man is about 40 years old with a large stomach, spoke Spanish, and drove a blue Mustang-type vehicle with scratches. Call county police if you can help in their investigation. Valero wants to increase capacity at its Delaware City oil refinery by more than 20,000 barrels a day. A spokesman says the extra output will add much-needed production to the markets, although it will likely have little impact on gas prices in our area. The proposal raises environmental concerns. The company wants to use credits earned during an earlier pollution control project to offset a jump in air emissions that's estimated at 209 tons per year. Denrick has to approve the expansion. Bolero wants quick approval. Main Street is coming to Wilmington. DDL News continues in a moment. As you look for your college experience, make sure you look at Wilmington College, your key to success. Main Street, a comprehensive, community-driven revitalization, is on its way to Wilmington. WDEL's Carl Konevsky reports. Wilmington's program is modeled after the Main Street Center program of the National Trust for Historic Preservation and incorporates the business community with the downtown residential community, something Mayor Jim Baker claims is essential. If you don't get people living in downtown, you can talk about retail till doomsday. You've got to have people living here. It's got to be a livable community. Downtown is not an isolated place where you just come in to buy stuff and you leave. The downtown Wilmington Main Street program is managed by Clarence Wright, who says the object is to lead the way in the downtown area as a new Wilmington emerges from the old. Main Street is not about uh, coming in and ignoring what's there and ignoring our current assets in favor of a brighter tomorrow, but it's about taking what we already have and building upon it for the future. Main Street is a community-driven revitalization program with partner organizations including Downtown Visions, the Wilmington Renaissance Corporation, and the Downtown Business Association. Reporting from Wilmington, I'm Carl Konefsky, 1150 AM, WDEL. Police have identified the man killed in a crash early yesterday at Darley and Darley Woods Roads in North Wilmington. Police aren't sure why 22-year-old Stephen Hay Fong Do of Arden lost control of the vehicle. It hit a large pile of mulch and flipped over, ejecting Do. The SUV then landed on top of him. Hundreds come out to honor those who have sacrificed for their country at Wilmington's Memorial Day Parade last night. WDEL's Ken Grant was there. Men and women in uniform were joined by civilians in Wilmington for the 140th annual Memorial Day Parade. 
Major General Frank Vavala of the Delaware National Guard said this is one way for people to express their appreciation for those who serve in the military. So events like this send a, a real visible message that you're supporting the men and women in uniform. There's also a lot of uh, funds available to be able to help the families of those deployed who are struggling. And I think those, those are two ways that you can manifest your support for our military. It means uh, America is standing free and uh, that uh, without the veterans and without the people that are there today, that we may not have the freedom. And people seem to forget that freedom isn't really free. You have to give to get the freedom. And uh, my father gave all he had, both as a World War II veteran and a, uh, uh, a, a, an elected official and a, and a family member. I think there is a lot more appreciation for the troops. I think, uh, you know, people are very aware of what they do for us. World War II veterans William McLaughlin and the late Frank Vary were the honorary Grand Marshals for the parade. Ken Grant, 1150 AM, WDEL. Another late inning comeback drive for the Phillies, WDEL Sports, and your Delaware Acuity the forecast coming up. Oh. Is everything okay, ma'am? Not really. I need to ride dark tomorrow to get to work, and I forgot to buy my dark cart. I guess I have to find a ride. Well, you certainly come to the right place. Didn't you know that Acme now sells dark cards and paratransit multi-trip cards? No, where? They're available at our customer service desk. Getting you there now starts at your 12 Delaware neighborhood Acme markets. Dart and Acme have joined in partnership to be your one-stop shopping place for both groceries and dark cards. It's now easier and more convenient than ever to pick up your dark cards with Acme. I'm Peter MacArthur. I'm Melanie Armstrong, and here are Delaware's top stories at the top of the hour. The most complete coverage of the news that matters in Delaware, every weekday morning, 530 till 9, on 1150 AM WDEL. In WDEL Sports, for the second time in the last three games, the Phillies' offense slumbered until the ninth inning and again came up a run short. The Phils trailed 4-0 before scoring three runs in the ninth, but Ryan Howard hit into a line drive double play to end the game. Randy Johnson shut down the Phillies, giving up just one hit over six innings. The Phillies have today off before starting a four-game series tomorrow night with Barry Bonds and the San Francisco Giants. The Blue Rocks blew a 6-1 lead, losing to Kinston 10-8. The Indians scoring six runs in the sixth inning to take an 8-6 lead. The loss drops the Blue Rocks half game out of first place in the Northern Division. Their road trip takes them to Salem, Virginia, where they open a four-game series tonight against the Avalanche. Your WDEL Delaware Acura with a forecast, mostly sunny today, a high 88. Tonight, clear skies, low 65. Tomorrow, sun and clouds, a high again, reaching 88. Get news updates throughout the day. Delaware's top stories at the top of the hour on 1150 AM, WDEL, or anytime right here at WDEL.com, including news video from Delaware and around the world from WDEL and the Associated Press. I'm Chris Carl. Thanks for watching.